Welcome everybody to uh, tonight's Year 10 Success Evening. I'm Mrs Gill, Executive Head Teacher here at Cumbran, having just joined the school recently in January. Um, firstly, can I just say how nice it is to be speaking to you directly, um, albeit remotely. Um, we had hoped to hold this event in person. However, as you're no doubt aware, COVID cases are increasing. And as such, we've decided to deliver this webinar to you today. Um, during the event, you will see presentations from a number of staff, um, including Mr. Lewis, assistant head teacher, uh, Mrs. Cunnington, head of English, Mr. Tippings, head of maths, and Miss Lloyd, head of science, and finally, Mrs. McCallum, head of year 10. Um, hopefully over the course of the evening, you'll be provided with some comprehensive information to be able to support your child over the next year. If you do have any questions as we go through the event tonight, if you can please put it into the chat, there is a chat button you'll notice at the top of your screen. Pop your question in the chat there. We won't be able to answer the question tonight, but we will then email you an answer um, at a later date. Um, just for your information, this webinar is also being recorded and we will then post the recording onto our school website so you can refer back to it at a later date. Um, I don't think I need to tell you the significance of the next two years of, on your pupils, on your child's life. Um, over this time, your child's going to be working to a significant number of qualifications, both at GCSE and um, equivalent. Um, for, for many of them, it's and, and us, it's more than we have to sit in our time at school. And of course, they're going to be completing these qualifications following 18 months of disruption to their education due to the COVID pandemic. Um, I recognise that during this time, they have had significant disruption in their learning and it has had an impact in many cases on their well-being as well. And so it's more important now than ever before that your child is prepared for life beyond school. And the best way that we can do that is by ensuring they have the best possible grades possible in the courses that they sit. You may be aware that there's been a significant change to exam, examinations at GCSE, um, and this has largely been due to COVID. Um, my team today will be talking you through those changes and what it will mean to your child. Because of COVID, the last two cohorts of Year 11 didn't actually sit exams. Instead, they had school-based assessments, most recently known as Centre Determined Grades. However, it is the intention at this moment that your child will sit exams at the end of Year 10 and Year 11. At the end of this year, they'll be sitting their GCSE in, in English Literature and Numeracy. And the reason that I've decided they'll do that is in the event of further disruption in their education over this coming year due to COVID, it will it reduce the pressure for them in, with the exams they have to sit next year. Um, however, as I've said, that the future in relation to COVID is uncertain and therefore we have to um, prepare for any future disruption. To do that, we're going to be gathering as much evidence as possible over the coming year to support any future examination or, if necessary, any assessment process. And therefore, it's vital that your child attends school on time every day. We have high expectations and aspirations for your child. We want them to achieve their potential. As parents and teachers, the best thing we can do for your child is to equip them with the skills for life, ensuring that they've got a range of qualifications, including maths and English, so they're able to compete effectively in the future job market and so they can realise their own ambitions. As a school, we're on a journey of rapid improvement and we'll go to any length to ensure that your child has the standard of education that you can expect. I'm now going to hand over to Mr Lewis, Assistant Head Teacher for Pupil Achievement and Standards. Thank you. Hello. 
pleased to meet you. My name is Mr. Lewis. I'm assistant head teacher for the responsibility for standards. If you can just bear with me a minute, I'm going to put the presentation up, which we'll be using for the rest of the meeting. Let me take a minute. Take a second. Okay. Yeah, here we are. Right, thank you very much. So, uh, as Mrs. Gill has talked about, the probably the most pressing question for you would be, are there exams this year? <clears throat> and the answer is, the exams that are planned are so far going to go ahead. That could change due to COVID, but we've got an approaching school which is going to both support the exams if they happen and if they don't happen and we have to make predictions for the pupils we will have lots of data which will give reliable and fair data for them so i'm going to basically go through that system now so <clears throat> exams are planned to go ahead this year now it's important to understand in year 10 they will only have gcse exams in english literature maths numeracy and science exams they're the only subjects that are in year 10 have gcse exams <clears throat> at the end of year 10 okay so and year 10 will complete both the english literature and hopefully the numeracy this year the science will be completed in year 11 they do have exams in year 10 but they complete the science gcse in year 11. So we need regular assessments which allow pupils, parents and staff to, to be able to measure the pupil progress. And the, and the real importance here is we need to be able to ensure that pupils understand what they know and what they don't know. Teachers need to understand what the pupils know and they don't know. And then we need to focus on what the, identify the pupils who are struggling and then give them the support they need in the areas that they're showing weaknesses in we need assessments that mirror exam conditions so what you're going to find and i'll go through it in a minute we've got assessments that that are going to be done under exam conditions because we need pupils to be prepared for the exams they're going to encounter later on in the year and if we do an acronym there center determined grade ctg it's possible due to COVID that we may have to replicate the system that we used last year in that we have to make we basically um we're the one to make the predictions of what grades that we think the pupils would have got and in order to do that fairly we need lots of assessment data and that's really what the procedures this year are all about so if i can go on to the next one all subjects have exam components and at key stage four, so both 10 and 11, between October the 5th and the 15th, there's going to be class assessments for every subject that has an exam component. That will be the assessment period one. There's an assessment period two, which is the end of November, the mid start of October. And in that one, you might notice there, we're going to have mocks actually in the hall. We're really going to get the pupils used to the exam experience that they would encounter at the end of 10 and 11. Assessment three will be another period. Again, there'll be a period of assessments that will be done in class again. And then we've got assessment four, which will be between the 21st of March and April the 1st. Again, mocks in the hall. And after that, the GCSEs start at the end of May <clears throat> and go forward into June. So we'll, from those four assessments, we'll have a pretty clear idea of where the pupils' strengths and weaknesses are and what we think that they're, they're probably going to get and then from april the first the exams we can focus on the identified weaknesses to make sure they do as well as they possibly can general advice now an obvious one attend all lessons um try i know the covid there might be issues and people pupils can't be in school but where possible try to attend all lessons 
if you do miss lessons, catch up using Google Classrooms. A lot of people are going to be talking about Google Classrooms today. It's a really important piece of software. There's lots of resources there, and every pupil needs to use them, and every parent needs to be aware that those resources are there. Uh, another piece of advice beyond time. Now, lessons do start at 8.35. We no longer have form at 8.35. We go straight into lessons at 8.35. And we are noticing that some year 10s have a bit of difficulty in actually getting there for 8.35, and that disrupts the learning of themselves and others. So please, could you ensure that you're in school, in lessons, to start at 8.35 promptly? Another one, too many pupils give up too easily. Please have a go at the activities in the classroom, and if you're not sure, then please ask for help. Don't let mistakes put you off. We're all continually learning. Okay, that's part of the learning process. I say to all the pupils in my class, have a go, see what, if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. That's part of the learning journey, and that's really, really important. Revise for the assessments. A key message through this, assess uh, through this presentation tonight is going to be, there's lots of assessments turning up. If the pupils don't prepare for the assessments, we don't know whether they understand the work or not. And if we don't know whether we're, they understand the work or not, we can't then target their weaknesses. Okay, so they need to work with us by revising for the assessments. And we're going to be using Google Classrooms for that. All the res resources are going to appear on Google Classrooms. The beauty there is, even if they're not in school, they can still access Google Classrooms and get all the revision resources that they need. Again, mentioned it, I'll mention it again. They need to work on their weaknesses identified in the assessments. What you tend to get, pupils get fixated with their grade or their mark. Oh yeah, they had 21 out of 30. Well, the important point there is 9 out of 30 marks they actually didn't get. So they need to start maturing a bit and thinking about how they're actually going to get the marks they didn't achieve. And that way they'll do really, really well in their exams. And talk to us. We're all in this together. Pupils, parents, teachers, we're all in this together. If we work together as a team, we're going to do very, very well. And I think the thread through this evening will be that. And I know it's easy for me to say, but relax and try to enjoy the journey, OK? We're going to try to make lessons pleasant. We're going to try and support pupils and keep stress as low as possible. But we need to try to enjoy it. A bit more information for you then. So some of it I've mentioned, just a bit of a recap. Subjects that have a written exam component will have written assessments. Assessments will be based on past papers of the exam board, so mainly WJC past papers, and marking schemes will be used. The assessments will take place under exam conditions, so pupils need to be prepared. Really, really important, that one. The pre-exam resources will be posted on Google Classrooms. We will be sending out texts to remind parents of upcoming exams. You may end up with uh, quite a few texts. I prefer you to have a lot of texts rather than not enough. Uh, I will try and formalise it, but it's not always possible weeks in advance to give the exact data when exams are taking place. But I've told you now, there will be exams taking place from the 5th of October to the 15th of October in just about all the subjects that have a written component. And you will be getting text messages to remind you, and the re revision resources will be on Google Classrooms. We will be sending the results of the assessments home so everybody knows what results we got, and these assessment grades will be used to make predictions. So, just for me to finish off, there's some actions for pupils now. Pupils need to know when they have assessments, they need to plan the revision schedule, they need to use the re written resources at home, which is for Google Classrooms, they need to find a suitable quiet place to study, try their best in assessments to develop exam stamina, be clear and honest of what they can do and can't do, focus on their weaknesses, and believe in themselves, because they can do it. Right, I am now going to hand over to Mrs. Kennington. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening. My name is Mrs. Kennington, and I'm Head of English. Um, at Combine High School, we offer our students two qualifications in English, uh, English Literature, and GCSE English language. Um, 
tonight I'm going to talk to you about GCSE English Literature as this is the qualification that we complete in full uh, in year 10. I'm just going to break down the qualification just so that you're aware of what it is actually that your child will be doing this year. So um, the qualification is separated into three units. Due to the pandemic, the WJC, the exam board, uh, took away one of the units, unit two. This means that your child will only have to sit one external exam. Uh, and because of that, they only have to study one novel. Um, your child hopefully has already mentioned Of Mice and Men to you. Um, this is because we study Of Mice and Men firstly in year nine. Um, this means that even before they've entered year 10, they've got a really good understanding of the novel. Uh, and we're just building on that knowledge ready for the first exam. You see on your screens now that the exam is actually quite early. So we're working towards Tuesday the 11th of January. Now that might seem like um, you, know, you know quite short time. It is. We've got um, I think four weeks now to a half term and then another seven. So we've got 11 weeks of teaching time. But your child has had a lot of that basis already covered in year nine. And we're just going to be building on that and working on exam techniques. Um, the first exam of Mice and Men, which I've talked about, and also poetry. So in lessons, we'll be covering both of those elements. You'll see that unit three uh, has remained. Um, it's called what we say controlled assessments now. Uh, you might know this as coursework. Um, so that takes up 40% of the qualification. That's done not in the exam hall, um, like the external exam will be done. This will be done in classrooms uh, in a really supportive environment. Your child will know the topic uh, of what the assessment is. They'll have a couple of weeks of, of pre-study. So um, a lot more of a supportive, relaxed environment. And, and you will be informed about exactly when those assessments will take place. At the moment, our plan is to, um, to start uh, poetry, uh, that controlled assessment essay in October, and then Shakespeare, we study Macbeth. Uh, and that will be uh, completed in January. Um, uh, you'll notice there that there's um, the two tiers, higher and foundation are the options for GCSE English Literature. Uh, what is really nice you know, for you to probably hear is that it doesn't matter what tier your child um, is, is entered for, they can achieve at least that C grade. We would love most of our students to be able to be entered for the higher tier but you'll notice that um, the option is A star to E. So those regular exams and assessments that Mr. Lewis just alluded to, they will help us make those decisions about what is the best tier for your child. Uh, and you'll know um, well in advance before that January exam date what um, tier your child will be sitting. The very first lesson um, when we came back uh, th this month, um, we, we looked at as a class, all exam classes, um, what, what students were going to be um, needing to achieve and what they were going to need to do in January. So all of our students have this at the front of their book, so you can always go back to this if you need to at a later date, just to refresh what it is that the exam entails. So you'll notice it's a two-hour paper. Um, the novel of Mice and Men is the one that we have chosen. There's two questions that they'll answer uh, in that first hour, and then they'll have two poems that are unseen that they'll be expected to compare. You'll see at the top there, I've also put the resit date. Now, we'd like to hope that our students, and historically our students, really perform well in that January exam. There aren't any other exams um, in that month, so the full focus is there. But if students do feel that they want to resit, even if it's just to achieve that star, um, if they've achieved an A, and we've had students in the past who have achieved the A in January and really want to push for the A star, uh, we offer that um, as an option. Uh, and that exam date, uh, the resit, will be the 25th of May. Uh, we'll be communicating the results for that January exam. Uh, it's normally around early March, so we'll have plenty of time then to decide um, what the reset options are. Um, but we are working towards that January date, and fingers crossed all of our students, as historically, will perform very well. In class, so um, study for this exam has begun. We're covering exam technique. Uh, we're rereading and, and looking at key scenes uh, and characters. Uh, in the novel of Mice and Men, developing that poetry analysis. And like I mentioned earlier, um, we will be completing those two uh, pieces of coursework over the course um, of the coming months um, and using those regular assessments and mock exams. What's nice for us to, to think about is actually the GCSE English Literature Qualification can essentially be all finished in January, leaving lots of time for, for maths and science, which um, you know, you'll hear about tonight that there are other exams there for your child to complete this year. Um, now, in terms of helping your child, we do all we can in school. There'll be revision sessions and we'll, we'll inform you of those uh, in due course. But um, if you wanted to uh, purchase any other revision materials, we will provide lots here. 
um, but, but some of the students really like to have some of their own at home. Uh, I've just put some on the screen here for you. There are some really um, uh, interesting um, study guides that you can purchase from places like Amazon. You can get them um, secondhand actually from a pound and, and some of them have notes in them which are excellent. Um, and also highlighters. I can't tell you enough how much of an important um, tool that they are. Uh, we use them in class, but it's really nice for students to have their own on the exam day. We provide one, but sometimes it's nice to have a different couple of colours, especially when it comes to analysing those poems and there's two of them. So just something for you to think about. Um, Google Classroom. Uh, we've used this a lot. Um, your child should be really familiar with using Google Classroom now. We used it a lot during home learning. Um, there'll be lots of revision materials. They're going to be uploaded over the coming weeks. You'll be text to let you know when they are ready and live. Uh, but not only just uh, revision materials in, in terms of you know, study guides and books, but also we will be putting um, support videos up. Uh, they'll be from myself, from your child's English teacher, meaning that they can just um, dip in and watch those um, in an evening, maybe in the lead up to the exams, just as a helpful little re a revision tool, um, even in the morning of the exam, just to maybe even steady their nerves to go over some of those. Uh, and our, ch uh, our students have talked about how useful they are. Um, yeah, there is a film. <laughs> so uh, actually, it, it's a really great film of The Of Mice and Men. It, it's not exactly the same. Um, there are some scenes and we talk our students through some of the scenes that may be a little bit different. But actually, um, it's quite close to the novel itself, a, a lot of the quotations that they'll pick up on. And sometimes it's quite nice. Um, I, I've heard parents before to have watched uh, the, the film with their child, maybe the weekend before their exam, uh, just as a little refresher. Um, and actually it's nice as a, a kind of a talking point as a family just before the exam. So um, I think it's available on Amazon Prime. I think you can also get some of the clips um, on YouTube. So worth a, uh, worth a thought. Um, websites, there's plenty of them. So maybe if your child prefers to use um, the internet rather than sat there with the revision guide hard copy. Um, there's some excellent ones I've just popped up there. Mr. Bruff um, is, is a brilliant little YouTube channel. Um, lots of helpful um, videos there, all about five, ten minutes, so just nice for a quick bit of revision. I'd also recommend your child downloads the LitChart app. I've just popped it there on the screen. Um, it's a free app uh, and lots, again, lots of handy revision tools and tips and quotes. I've known students in the morning of an exam just to be you know, on their phones, scrolling through LitCharts and just looking at some quotes for, you know, that's a bit, minute bit of revision. Um, so something there for your child to maybe download at their leisure. And just finally from me, um, there's lots of ways that you can support your child. Obviously, we'd really like you to encourage them to use the homework booklets and all of the revision tools that we're going to pop up on uh, Google Classroom. I'll also let you know we're going to pop a few hard copies into reception as well. Uh, I know some students do prefer to you know, have their highlighter and, and to use it um, you know, on, on their desk rather than on, on the laptop. So they'll be available for you as well. Um, encourage them to attend revision sessions. Uh, they are to be confirmed. Um, so, so we'll let you know, but, but hopefully you'll be able to offer after school and, and half termly ones um, just in the lead up to uh, that exam date. Um, I've, uh, I've mentioned there and I talked to our, the students about this before, um, this exam is on the 11th of January, um, so the second week back after Christmas. So I'm not saying they need to be rereading of my summit on Christmas Day, but you know that little lull period in between Christmas and New Year, great opportunity for them to get the book out and reread and there will be a copy of that available to them if they need that. Um, just check they're using the revision guides. Even think about testing your child on some of the quotes and notes that they build up. They'll be given their books and their folders to take home for the Christmas period. So, uh, so why not you know, test them, have a little look at their books and see what they know. Um, I really hope that was um, useful. Any questions, um, please um, let me know and I'll be happy to answer anything. Thank you very much. I think I'll pass you on now to Mr Tippings to go through the maths. Good evening everybody, my name is Mr Tippins, I'm Head of Maths here at Cumbrian High School and I'm going to take you through a presentation this evening which will ultimately give you the guide of how we as a department and how you as parents can work together to ensure that every learner gets the best possible outcome for them in mathematics. So the GCSE Mathematics Numeracy will consist of two papers, uh, that is one non-calculated paper and one calculated paper that will be sat in the summer exam season for next year. We don't have definitive dates for that yet but it's normally the end of May and beginning of June. An important point to note is the cumulative scores that will determine the learner's grade. So it's really important that the learners turn up to both of these exams and complete them to the best of their ability. If they only turn up for one, that's going to severely affect the chances of their overall grade. 
Now, maths is slightly uh, different to English and science because we have three tiers of entry. So I'm just going to talk you through how the tier of entry can affect the learner's grade. So the higher tier, the learner can only access grades A star to C. And anything less than a C grade point wise, the learner will end up with a U grade. Then there's the intermediate tier. And again, the learners can access grades B to E. And anything less than an E grade, the learner will be awarded a U. And then finally, there is the foundation tier, which allows the learners to access D to G and anything less than a G results in a U grade. Now, that's really important for us in mathematics because we want to ensure that the learners are entered at the correct tier in order for them to get the best chance of getting the best grade possible. So these are our provisional tiers of entry at the moment. So you can check with your, your learner, your child, what class they're in. So I, I'm not going to talk through that, but that's on the screen for you to have a look at for a second. And we obviously want the learners to access the highest tier possible. And our entrance will be based on informed decisions through the assessments that Mr. Lewis has talked about right at the beginning there. So his, these assessments are vital and are important to your learner throughout the year in order to ensure that they are being entered into the best tier possible for them. So how are the learners being prepared for mathematics? So we've created specialised schemes of learning for year 10, that is for the numeracy exam. So we've really deeply analysed all the previous exams, looked at the topics which appear commonly every year, and we're hitting those early in year 10 to ensure the learners have the best chance possible of answering those in the exam. Every learner in year 10 will have a mini assessment every fortnight, testing the recent material covered in class. Now, the year 10 assessments have just started happening this week, so it might be a good idea to have a conversation with your child in regards to how did you get on, um, or when is it, so that they, they're aware that you know they're having these mini assessments. And we're not just assessing the learners, we're obviously giving them the opportunity to develop as well, and there will be dirt time associated to one lesson within a week after the test being completed, so the learners can close the gap uh, on their mini assessment in order to prepare them for the summer. And as Mr Lewis has already alluded to, there are going to be four key assessments throughout the year. And specific re revision resources will be provided by Google Classroom and MathsWatch for your learners. So I'm just going to talk through how we're going to use Google Classroom for math. So um, they need to log in via their hub details. So it'd be useful if you could have a conversation with the child this evening. Do you know your hub details? If not, you need to go and get them tomorrow. And in their Google Classroom then, they need to go on to the classwork section. And in maths, we have created a revision list topic for each pupil. Once they access that topic, there is then a document that contains uh, a Google Docs, which looks something like this. So for each assessment, we are creating specific revision lists. So they will change for each assessment for the topics that are on their assessment. And then they, can, they have access to a video, which is made by one of the maths departments. So it's not a generic video. It's a video that's specialized for our learners. They've got opportunity to practice some past paper questions and then some answers. Now, if I was going to be giving you the best tips for revising math, I'd be saying watch the video, make some notes, have a go at some questions. Any you can't do, watch the video again, then see if you can attempt it and then check your answer. So they're trying to self-learn and self-develop with the videos that are being provided to them. Now, these will go live to learners next week. And they are, there is time associated in maths lessons for each maths teacher to say, this is now in your Google Classroom. This is how you access it. And this is how you need to use it. And finally, what can you do to support is ensure that the learner is fully equipped for lessons and the minimum expectation for a maths lesson is they've got their black pen, a red pen, a ruler, a calculator and a highlighter. Showing an interest in their assessment scores, so keeping them on their toes that you know they're having these assessments, you want to know what their scores are, what did they do well in, what didn't they do well in. And also, if you want to watch the videos that have been provided to learners in order to upscale yourself if needed. And ultimately for me, uh, I think this sums up what this evening is all about, is that if the teacher, the learner and their support network at home works together, then that will give us an opportunity, the best possible opportunity of success in the summer examinations. Thank you very much for listening. If there are any questions, please pop them in the chat or email them into school and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm just going to pass over to Mrs Lloyd, the Head of Science. Hello. Uh, good evening, I'm Joanne Lloyd, I'm Head of Science. 
I'm um, just going to talk through the different pathways that we offer for um, Year 10 and 11 students. There are three different courses that we run um, within the science department, and I'll discuss then the, the sort of um, the different structure for each of those courses as well. Bear with me a second. Changing. Sorry, bear with me a second. Okay, so we offer three different pathways. Um, triple science, where at the end of um, year 11, the children will receive three different grades, one for biology, one for chemistry, and one for physics. Um, in double science, there are two grades at the end of year 11, and then double applied science, or double applied to CSE, again, there are two grades at the end of year 11. Um, all of those pathways are GCSE pathways. We don't offer vocational pathways within the, um, the science structure. Um, the difference of each of the, the different pathways is in the um, exam components and the level of coursework. There's, there's not one that's any easier or more difficult than the others. Um, some have more exams, some have more coursework, coursework based assessments. Um, now, at the moment, we have um, two triple science classes. They are the R1 and A1 classes, two double award GCSEs in the R2 and A2, and the, the remainder of the classes then run with the applied GCSE. Um, the, the, all pupils are in these sets already, but what we will do at the end of this half term is we will review and amend those sets to ensure all pupils are in the correct set for the ability and the course that's most suited for them. Um, now, it says that all the pathways offer both foundation and higher tier uh, GCSE. Um, for, for that, um, we will use the assessments that are, are carried out in class to determine which of those tiers are most suited to your child. Now, it might be that um, a, a child might have a preference towards um, biology and find biology slightly more easy than physics, for example. So what we can do in science is um, we can mix and max, match the tiers to, to suit each child. Um, so with triple science, um, there are six exams over the two years. So at the end of year 10, there'll be three exams, one for biology, one for chemistry, and one for physics. And then as things are proposed at the moment, if there are no changes due to COVID, there'll be a practical exam in January of year 11. Um, as I've explained already, so there'll be at the end of year 11, then there are three uh, separate grades that are available. Um, now, the triple award course is the same as the double award course, so the content is the same to a certain extent, and then once the double award content is completed, there is extra content then to cover the um, additional topics towards the triple science. Um, for double award then, again, still six exams over the two years, so it's the same structure as the triple science, the only difference is the exams are slightly shorter, they're half an hour shorter per exam. So there'll be three exams at the end of year 10 and then three exams at the end of year 11. Okay, and again, um, a practical component in January of year 11, at the moment that is, is still um, aimed to go ahead. So the double award um, applied sciences, the course is slightly different. Um, there are only two exams in year 10. Um, for those exams, biology, chemistry and physics is still taught, but the exams cover all three topics. So there'll be a mixture of biology, chemistry and physics questions within, within each of the two exams at the end of year 10. Uh, the difference then for the applied science courses in year 11, they have a task-based assessment which is carried out in class, but that is a bit like a coursework component. And then the same as the other double award, there's also the practical exam in the January of year 11. Okay, and then they would get the two grades at the end of year 11. So at the moment, there will be these three exams at the end of year 10. So your child will have, um, if they're in triple science, three exams at the end of year 10, they're an hour and 45 minutes each. Um, that is 45% of their waiting, and then the re remain, so they, they, will, they will not grade at the end of year 10. They'll be aware of what grade they had per paper, but it's not a qualification. The qualification is awarded once the year 11 exams are carried out, and then the scores are added together to give a total towards those grades. So 45% of the course will be carried out in year 10, and that is the same then for GCSE triple and double science. Um, then with the second year, then we have the second um, 45% and added to that then is the 10% from the practical assessment. Now with double awards, there's a slightly different structure in that um, all six exams are, um, so there's three exams from year 10 and three exams from year 11 are added together and it's those scores then that determine a double grade. So if a child has a particular strength or a particular weakness, that those scores will be averaged with the other, other subjects, okay? 
Um, and then, as I've said, then there were two only two exams for GCSE double applied in year 10. Um, each of those have a 25% weighting. Again, biology, chemistry and physics are mixed in those papers, um, but we are we prepare them towards those papers then to have the mixed questions. So the topics are taught separately. They, they currently have a biology teacher, chemistry teacher and physics, um, but all of our papers are mixed in then together. Now, in class, what we're doing to support all children, we have um, we teach by booklets. So within the in in the class, all children have their own booklets, which is a structured paper then with um, past paper questions. All of the content is included in those booklets. Um, we do have revision guides, but we tend to um, issue the revi revision guides more towards Easter. Um, within the lessons, then we the booklets are structured, so there's lots of past paper practice. So it's the structure of the questions, um, it's the types of questions that come up, but also to practice the content so that children are able to then uh, we teach them, they can apply their knowledge, they review whether they understand that, that then before we move on. Um, what we also use is we use the examiner report. So each year when there is an external exam sat, the examiners will produce a report of what is carried out well. Um, across Wales for all students and things that are not carried out so well. So what our booklets include are any of the questions where children across Wales have not achieved so well in a certain structured question and then we include them in the booklets to ensure that there's plenty of practice then to address any misconceptions. Okay, now within class, within the past paper questions that we carry out in the booklet, your child will be self-assessing so they will know how they're performing as we go along. We have end of topic tests carried out in class that will then give each child an idea of what grades they are at. Um, in, with regards to the tiers that I mentioned at the start of the presentation, um, we will only enter a child for higher tier if they are performing at a high C grade and above in the majority of the end of topic tests. Um, it's just to ensure that we don't get them, we don't get anyone dropping off the C grade and achieving a U if they sit the higher tier paper. Um, again, though it's done by discussion with your child, that we don't, we'll discuss it with your parents evening, um, and your child will know how they are progressing as we go along in terms of what grade they are they averaging. Um, now, if at the moment, as, as it said, is that the um, the exams will go ahead. If the exams don't go ahead and then we do move to centre determined grades, um, we will use the end of topic test data in order to um, determine which grade your child is working at. So it's really important that the all children are working and they've got their revision prior to these end of topic tests, although they're in class, because that will be our tracking and that will be the data that we're using then in order to provide a sense of determined grades in the event of not having exams. At the moment, the exams are provisionally set and for year 10, the science test uh, exams, sorry, are usually in June, okay, beginning of June. Um, so we also have a Google Classroom. Um, each different course has their own um, Google Classroom. So there'll be, a, there'll be a classroom for triple science, one for double and one for applied. And um, we'll update that fortnightly. So if um, your child is off school for any reason, um, the information that they'll be covering every fortnight will be updated to the Google Classroom. And then there are the, the classroom booklet is included on the classroom, as well as revision guides, as well as um, online quizzes, tests and so on. OK. So um, there are YouTube clips, BBC Bite Size and everything else. So anything your child would need to support the revision, if there's a topic that they're not quite understanding and they're not quite sure of, um, all of the information is there and they're able to go home and do some extra work just in terms of catching themselves up. Um, equally, um, all of the science staff are available in the mornings, not, not quite for so long in the mornings, we have some briefings, but we are available every night after school if your child needs to pop in and ask for any help. Um, equally, in the lesson time, the staff are there to help as well. Um, if there's any questions in terms of the, the three separate courses or where your child is, um, by all means email in, um, contact us in the chat and I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, I'm going to hand to Mrs McCallum, okay, Head of Year 10 and she'll discuss information. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming this evening. Um, I do think it's very important um, that we take the opportunity to think about Year 10 and what lies ahead for our young people. Um, but the purpose of this evening is really just to both reassure and um, inform you about what to expect. And I'm very aware as I'm sat here that we've, we've given you an awful lot of information. Um, so even as parents, you'll probably sat there now feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Um, please don't feel overwhelmed. Um, we have recorded the entire presentation. So if you need to recap on anything, if there's anything that's particularly concerning you, and um, there will be a link to this, um, this evening's presentations 
on the school website so you can review it um, and take your time. So thinking about year 10, obviously, um, start of GCSEs, um, but actually it isn't really always the case that we have until the end of year 11. Um, and so what we want to do is make sure that all of our pupils can achieve the very best that they're capable of. It isn't about the grades for me as their head of year. It's all about making sure that every single one of our young people achieve the very best that they they can really because that's that's what they're here for. So if at the moment um, your child is showing absolutely no sign of stress, if they're not coming home talking about um, their workload, um, then I'd say that perhaps it's time um, to have a little conversation about that. They should be very, very aware that the, the pace of learning has ramped up. And I know that some pupils are feeling this very strongly at the moment. Um, if you're hearing nothing about school, nothing about work to do, it's perhaps time to have that conversation and ask those questions. What are you doing? Let's check Google Classrooms together, those sort of things. On the other hand, if your child is really stressing out, working all the, the hours um, that God sends, if they're working every evening, then there's a danger that they're tipping over into that unhealthy level of stress. So it's all about trying to calm those fears and help them to manage that. You know your child best, so it's about keeping an eye on things. Children as well are very, very aware, and quite a few have spoken to me today. They're very aware of the time left lost um, in their learning due to the pandemic. Um, and the fact of the matter is that there isn't much that they can do about that. We're very aware of that. The exam boards are aware of that. Um, obviously, they have made some adaptations to the examinations. And as I said to some year tens today, let us worry about that. Your job is just to get in and try the best that you can. So what can you do to help? Well, it's watching out for that stress, isn't it? Um, making sure that your child is building in plenty of time for rest. Making sure that they eat well. These are so basic, aren't they? Avoiding energy drinks, making sure that they're staying hydrated. Um, and we all know that there is a clear link between um, good quality sleep and the ability to learn. So make sure that they are getting those, those decent hours in. Talk to them about their sleep and how they're feeling. Um, help them to study. Perhaps don't assume that they know how. Um, I know that when I had this conversation with my son, he didn't have a clue where to start. So it's about sitting down and saying, OK, this is what works for me and going through the range of options. Is it highlighting and making notes? Is it drawing mind maps? Find out what works for your child and support them so that they feel confident to spend the time studying. Discuss their nerves and worries. I think that communication um, at this stage is really, really important. Um, it, it, you're not going to know what's wrong unless you have those um, conversations. Encourage them to get out and exercise. It's very, very healthy um, for them, obviously. Um, but it's also good for their mental health as well as their physical well-being. Um, and try not to add to the pressure with discussion about grades um, and and you know that sort of thing it's just a, it, it's about them doing their best and if you're satisfied that your child is doing everything that they can then that has to be enough for you for them and for everybody else and don't forget the need for treats they need to be rewarded when they're doing well and trying their best so some things to avoid and it might be quite a difficult conversation to have with a teenager in fact i know for a fact it is a difficult conversation to have but is it time to start negotiating now um, some some sensible limits, some time limits, some curfews, limiting the use of the mobile phone so that they can focus on work at key times, um, certainly limit, li limiting um, screen time late at night, um, and the same with the gaming, and thinking about energy drinks, which, we, you know, there's been a lot of press about how dangerous those are, but also, you know, when we're talking about learning, they're actually proven to have a detrimental effect on their ability to learn and to concentrate. And then some real practicalities. What, what, what can you really do? Well, you can support your child by getting them to school on time. So we talked a lot, you know, when, when, when pupils were younger about helping them to get organised, making sure they've got the equipment they need, that their bags are packed the night before. But actually, it's more important now um, than it was back in, in year seven. Have a copy of their timetable handy so that you can ask questions about the subjects that they've had that particular day. 
it's really important to try to provide a quiet time and space for study and that can be very difficult in a busy household I know so the sooner we have those conversations the sooner we can draw up um, a timetable so that we know who's using the laptop when um, and you know making sure there's some uninterrupted time then the more chance they've got of success and it really is now more than ever important to show a genuine interest in their education. They've just started new, new subjects, haven't taken their options. Um, if you show that you're interested and that you care, um, then you're going to get more out of them in the long run because they'll feel they can open up. And praise and reward um, success. I try very, very hard to focus on the positives um, within this year group. And I remind the pupils at every single assembly of all the many positives that I see day in and day out about them as a year group. And I think that if we see success, then we need to make them aware. So do monitor class charts, praise them every time they're getting um, positives because they need to know that we're aware and that we're in it together. Um, and uh, the last point I know is a controversial one. I know that holidays um, have been in short supply recently, particularly holidays abroad. But at the end of the day, um, it is, now the time that we need to av avoid booking holidays in school term time you've seen already how much is in the calendar for this year so we just need to make sure um, that, that children are in school as much as they possibly can because the reality is we do not know what further disruption covid is going to bring our way so how can you help them well help your child to draw up a study timetable um, and to divide this study time into small chunks. It's far better to do 20 minutes three times to make up an hour in the evening. Um, and it's far better to study a little bit each evening than leave it all for a Sunday and do five hours then. We all know that nobody learns under that sort of pressure. Everybody's mentioned Google Classroom. I don't think I need to say anything else about that this evening. It is there to support them and to help you have a clear overview of, of the work that's there to support them. Um, and help them get involved, create those revision prompts with them. They will thank you in the long run. And finally, probably the most important thing of all, please talk to them and talk to us. If you're worried about a particular subject, then contact your child's teacher, um, that subject teacher, or the head of that subject. If you're worried about your child in more than one subject, if it's a general wellbeing concern, um, then first point of contact would be the child's form tutor but you can always also email myself or my deputy head of year um, Mr Brown we are really here to support the children and to bring out the very best in them and the final thing from me really is to thank you for investing your time in your child's future tonight um, and I'm going to hand back to Miss Gill in just a second thank you all for attending and we'll speak soon no doubt Thank you. Thank you all and, and parents and, and children there. Thank you for your time listening to tonight. Um, as, as Ms. McCallum said, there, there's been a lot of information tonight, um, possibly overwhelming to you. Um, just remember, in terms of your child, you, you've heard about three subjects, their core subjects tonight. But in fact, there's an, a great deal more subjects that they have to, to sit exams or assessments for that are both compulsory and their option subjects. So I think you get a sense from tonight of how much work is involved for your child over the next two years. What is important now is that we pace that work so they're not overwhelmed. Um, in order to do that, it's absolutely vital that they are in lessons every day learning. Um, and to support that, we've developed more a series of rules and routines that will support their learning in the classroom. Uh, recently, we've had changes to COVID guidance, as, as you're well aware in Wales. Um, and as a result of that, we've moved from three sessions a day to five one hour lessons, which is what we had prior to COVID. The reason that we've done that is to ensure that there, there is rapid pace in lessons, children get to um, cover more subject topics within the course of the day. What is important is when they're in those five lessons a day, they make that time count. And therefore, we have very high expectations of your child. Um, the new rules and routines 
I make no apology for. I expect your children to be on time for lessons. I expect them to be in lessons learning. If they are late for lessons, there is going to be a sanction. They will be expected to be in detention and there will be further sanctions if it continues. I expect them when they're in lessons to have their phones away and it's switched off in their bags. Again, if they um, have their phones out, they will be confiscated. And finally, I expect your children to be able to sit in a lesson for an hour without the disruption of needing to go to the toilet. What we've been seeing um, is that children are still asking to go to the toilet in lessons. It causes a huge amount of disruption, as I'm sure you appreciate. And what I'm asking is that children um, go to the toilet between lessons and at break and lunch. There are lots of opportunities for your child to go to the toilet. But what I'm asking is that they don't go to the toilet during the lesson because it disrupts their learning. It is really important that children are on time and ready to learn with the right attitude. So I thank you in advance for your support um, that I know that you're going to, to give to, to your children and to the school over the next two years. I think it is going to be, um, albeit uncertain, I'm absolutely confident that your child will do really well in Cumbran High School. So thank you for your time. Just as a reminder, this presentation will be available on the school website so you can go back, particularly around the, the PowerPoints to make sure that you, you pick up on, on those email addresses and those books that have been recommended to you. So thank you for that and, and goodbye.